Okay, Chris, we're on the factory floor right now, and there is a lot going on in this space. Yeah, definitely very open floor plan. Like to make sure our team is embedded in the problem that they're helping support. Not a lot of office space in the building. Everyone is close to the product, close to what we're machining. What they're machining is parts. Parts for planes, rockets, and everything aerospace in between. We are a semi-autonomous manufacturing company with the mission of like reindustrializing the U.S. As Hadrian's director of operations, Chris Baker, explains, the company is automating manufacturing processes for aerospace and defense companies. Its goal is to make parts faster and cheaper. We make parts that go into some of the most complex assemblies, coolest environments in the world and even outside of this world. Can't talk about the exclusive application of each thing, but we make parts for a variety of different applications. So whether it's putting astronauts on the ISS, whether it's helping get a satellite into orbit, whether it's a satellite itself, whether it's commercial aircraft, the one common thread for a lot of what we make is it has to leave the ground. The majority of our applications are flying in some manner, whether manned, unmanned, in this world, out of this world. There's a lot of interest in space and defense right now, and so the demand is growing, capacity is dropping, so every large incumbent is looking for supply consolidation, another player that they can partner with, that they know they can grow with, and that's something we can go offer. Hadrian was founded in 2020 by Chris Power, who serves as the company's CEO. It was Power's vision that got Hadrian off the ground, literally. Ultimately, in this industry, it is a very human-based problem. So machining is grounded in science, but is often more artisanal and very dependent on the experience of the general user that's at the machine manufacturing the part. And the solution that Chris is really driving is the only way to go scale this and rebuild the infrastructure is to start to standardize some of those inputs, build as much into automation, still rely on the human in the loop to help make some of these complex decisions, but automate a lot of the transactional steps in between. But you won't hear which companies are benefiting from Hadrian's expertise. We want to operate in a space where our customers trust us with confidentiality and exclusivity. We have a pretty hard requirement not to talk about who we work with and really just protect our customers' programs, our customers themselves, and make sure we serve our end of this puzzle, which is providing complex hardware on time and on quality without divulging any information that could have a negative consequence for our customers. It's all in the name of thinking big picture. Our ambition is endless. I think the focus and advanced manufacturing will remain. As our technology is developed, it's now how do we go scale this and offer it to more customers and really help solve the industry problem. Hadrian has become a force in the industry, and one can't help but be impressed by its headquarters on Western Avenue. Just over 100 people work out of this 100,000 square foot facility. And as you can hear behind me, there are 15 machines working just as hard. And the company already has plans in place to expand in the future. Walk me through what we're standing in front of right now. Yeah, so this is one of our machine tools. It is where everything comes together. So a lot of the different tasks in the factory lead up to material being here, the right cutting tools being in place, and allow us to go from a block of metal to an aerospace park. The magic is all of the different systems in our factory that we build to communicate with the machine, pull data from the machine to help coordinate all the activity that goes into making a part. It all goes back to Chris Power feeling the need for a more modernized supply chain, as most manufacturing in the industry is served by tons of machine shops, with most of the work done manually. What is easier in industry is, hey, I'm gonna run this one part number or SKU, so hey, I'm gonna make the same widget a thousand times. That's like a more typical like production shop. These machines are very good for that. You set it up once and you just load and repeat the same process over and over again. What we do is like, because we're serving small batch aerospace, so it's like highly iterative designs, is we're building a system that allows us to go in and out of different part numbers, so extremely high mix of parts in rapid succession and handling all of the key process differentiation in our systems where typically it would be trapped in someone's head. Essentially, there is a computer that drives the car, which is your machine. And so we have 15 
call them autonomous machines that we feed an input or a signal to and they manufacture hardware for us. Your machines stare back at you. Yeah, they've got their own personalities. Most of them actually have names as well. We had an employee got super excited to personify the machines and it's something that's stuck with us as we've grown. Yeah, this is Harvey the Hermelite. Every machine has eyes on it. The robot behind us isn't going to do all that exciting of work. It's gonna help us transport parts to and from the machines. Stepping into this was like our next level of system design where we're building our own modular systems that we can grow and scale rapidly and handle the wide variation of part we see for our different customers. Now walk me through the tower that is to our right. Yeah, I like to call that the big parking lot. That's where our raw materials store, that's where finished parts are stored that finish up through the night when we don't have anyone here to unload them. It's really the big work queue for the fleet of CNC machines we're putting here, as well as storage when we're waiting to take something off and take it over to quality. Walking around this facility, it's easy to observe a cool and calm company culture. It's very important to us, like culture is as important as the product we build, like it is a product. The intent is we can put you in an environment you're comfortable to grow in as quickly as possible. We're all owners in this company. Every person has equity in the company. And that's, again, a very deliberate mechanism we're using to make sure people feel true ownership in the vision and like where we're marching. We've done team bowling tournaments. We definitely celebrate the back end of really hard pushes where we're launching a new system. We'll go out in the back and do RC car races that are coordinated by the team. We'll do barbecues in the back. Or even a chili cook-off. <laughs> We're very deliberate about making sure folks of different backgrounds, experience, environments have plenty of opportunities to co-mingle. Our people are like the coolest aspect of what we do. We have former bus drivers, former nurses, UPS drivers, Home Depot workers. Like, there's no prerequisite to be an employee here if you prove the curiosity and like drive to go push to the next level. Like, you're a good fit. We're making it so that if you care, you're excited, and you've just been looking for a meaningful opportunity to go grow with the company and work on some of the coolest hardware on the planet, we will provide that. We want to provide a challenging environment where people push each other to exceed and push each other to grow, but less than 10% of our manufacturing team actually stepped foot in a machine shop before their Hadrian interview, which is like second to none in industry. Like this employee, recent Torrance High School graduate, now a level one factory technician. What was it about Torrance High School that prepared you for work here? I'd say it was definitely a lot coming here, but what helped me the most was I had that drive to create from like ceramics and art. And so it kind of felt like I could get used to it and it wasn't too big of a challenge. What are you creating behind us? Well, here we're creating, making spaceship parts. Pretty exciting. Hearing about like actual launches too makes you want to make more stuff. And talk about your teacher at Torrance High that maybe instilled your creative bug. I went through ceramics and then advanced ceramics and my teacher, Miss Rivera, I'd say it definitely made the class more fun and it instilled that drive to create. Hold it there and pull it towards you really, really slowly. And then stop when you get to that bump. I've been teaching at Torrance for 11 years. Um, I teach ceramics, I teach art as well. Having a former student mention that I've inspired them, it's inspiring to me as well. I think that's the ultimate goal of a teacher. That's why we do what we do. I just hope to create a safe space for my students where they can be creative and also building on problem solving skills, which I think is really important. Sean was one of the nicest students I've ever had. He was so lovely. He just wanted to learn more. I think most people would think a science teacher would inspire him or a science class or a math class. So to hear that ceramics inspired him, it's amazing because one, it's a very ancient art form, but it's still, I think, relevant to today. And with technology, it's wonderful that he was able to tap into those skills that he learned in my class and make a career out of it. Working with the local community is very important to us. So partnering with different schools that have an opportunity to be a future pipeline of talent. I know Torrance has a great school system. 
that is potentially full of future employees or future makers of the world, whether they work at Adrian or elsewhere. Connecting with local schools and government, plus having set up roots in Southern California, has worked out well for this startup. Hadrian started out in neighboring Hawthorne and then moved to Torrance. The South Bay obviously has a large customer base that we can service, so the decision makes sense for commercial reasons. I think we have good community partnerships with Torrance. It's nice having like representatives from the city here, including the mayor. We have the workforce development team here talking through ways we can really scale our training and make it more accessible outside of these four walls. It's definitely important for us to like keep a local presence while we're going to solve this problem. And solving the problem all comes down to Hadrian's product, the factory. And this one is just the beginning. Okay. Okay, Chris, what are they doing back here? This is where we're building cutting tools that we use to go shape parts for customers. Our customers provide us a unique set of requirements based on the geometry of the part, the specific application. And this is where we go build all of the different intricate tools that go take that part from a block of metal into a completed component for our customers. Now, you said the word customers. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Can you give me a little bit more about those customers? You're not gonna get any of it out of me. I will say that it's an active list that's growing, but the specific names are gonna stay here. All you can tell me is that you're in the air. We're in the air, we're in space, we're in a lot of different places. How we get there, use your imagination.